Hi friends, it's Gene Valentino here, and welcome to another edition of the Grassroots Truthcast. We're here in my favorite spot, Dino's Hangar, in Perdido Key, Florida. This is, I'm, I'm right in front of, and right behind me, is my favorite toy, the Icon A5. And this is where we play and work and puff cigars and pretend we're important. <laughs> I'm with a lovely friend who I've had the privilege of meeting over the last few months. Her name is Maria Calkins. Maria is from our neighboring county, Santa Rosa County, and she's got a very interesting background. We're here to talk about something that's getting on the radar ever since the movie Sound of Freedom, ever since Dinesh D'Souza's 2000 Mules. We're going through a transformative change where the average citizen is stepping up and stepping out to become advocates of protecting those we have are living and dying for, each other and our children. Maria Calkins, head of Moms for Liberty. Is that right? Santa Rosa County. Of Santa Rosa County. That's right. And That's we'll right. talk about not only Moms for Liberty in Santa Rosa County, but the entire organization nationwide when we return right after this. With breaking news and political commentary from a public servant, serial entrepreneur, community leader, philanthropist, and American patriot, and a darn nice guy, it's time for the Grassroots Truthcast and your host, Gene Valentino. Welcome back to the Grassroots Truthcasts. I'm here with Maria Calkins from Santa Rosa County. Her husband's uh, James, James Calkins, who is a current county commissioner in Santa Rosa County, has the same job I had here in Escambia County as county commissioner. And uh, it's where we get a chance to stick our oar in the water and do good for the community. James is doing it in Santa Rosa. I did it here in Escambia County. And we'll have to get James on too. That's Welcome. Right. Thank That's you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I'm glad we met at the Republican Party event a few months ago in Santa Rosa County. We were introduced by another commissioner, Mike Kohler, who's our representative here in this area. Mike gave me the privilege of meeting Maria. Folks, Maria is ahead of a group that really reaches out to protect our children and to help our children in this nation. Maria, welcome. Introduce yourself. Tell us where you're, where you're coming from and where you are now. And then I have a bunch of questions for you about Moms for Liberty. All right. Well, I'm Maria Calkins. I'm a chairwoman of Moms for Liberty, Santa Rosa County chapter. We started our chapter in March of March 30th. That's when we officially started our chapter. So we're still young, but ever since we started, we already created a lot of waves, I would <laughs> say, and dealing with our local school district. I don't know if you want to touch that now or you want to ask me later. Yeah, I'll this. ask you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So are you a, are you an uh, American citizen? Are you Russian? Yes. Now, I'm an American citizen. I'm a Russian origin, but I'm proud to be American. And I'm, I became a U.S. citizen in 2018. And even before I became U.S. citizen, I was advocating for conservative Republican candidates to get elected so that we can keep our country strong and away from the, this evil movement that we can see now. So many people take for granted this notion of the melting pot of the world. America is truly the melting pot of the world. Mm -hmm. You're a perfect example of that because sometimes those people who have been given citizenship over the years and have taken it for granted. Mm -hmm. The melting pot is the immigrant coming in from who knows where that becomes an American citizen and becomes one of the finer contributors to this nation. Mm -hmm. We see people in the political world stepping up now, Vivek Ramaswamy on the Republican right. Party, a young billionaire in mm -hmm. his 30s, for God's sake, coming in for as a presidential candidate. Nikki Haley, who served as ambassador to the United Nations under Donald Trump's appointment. And I could go on. There's several people even in this panhandle of Florida of Indian descent who are very big entrepreneurs and are proud of their citizenship. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at you, Maria, I think of that, and I want you to know it means a lot to me, and I'm very grateful someone like you steps up to do what's really necessary to protect this constitutional republic, the yeah, democracy right. we live in. Exactly. So you're the re a district head or a, 
head of Moms for Liberty in Santa Rosa County. Right. Let's start with the national organization. Mm -hmm. Who are they and how, it got, how did it get started? Well, it started with two moms who were former school board members and a current school board member, or the third founder of the Moms for Liberty team. They just started because it was during COVID crisis and when all this unfairness started happening and when parents realized that our parental rights are under attack. And when the government or governmental entity tells your children have to wear certain, you know, it's not even protective, but something on their face, which tremendously affected children. And because the, there are a lot of signs behind it that it's psychologically affecting children. And it definitely did not benefit their health. And those decisions were supposed to be made by parents, not by government. We, we've seen during COVID, huge government overreach. And that's what motivated Moms for Liberty to start. And then at Wide. Nationwide, they started growing and it's the fastest growing organization. They started in January of 2021. And right now we have chapters in 45 states and we continue growing because the main reason why we so rapidly grow because we are parents we're grandparents it's all about children protecting children in the future of our country because that's who will be holding our country in their hands is our children and what we see right now the government overreach and all those different indoctrination tactics in our public education being targeting our children and in order to protect them we start doing this grassroots campaign of parents getting together and getting organized. Because before Moms for Liberty were formed, a lot of parents already raised awareness on what's going on about inappropriate materials in school libraries. But they was always, they was never heard. There was always like some here and there, but now we organize movement of parents, mothers, dads for liberty, grandparents for liberty. All right, so you're in Santa Rosa County. County, Florida. How did you find out about it? It's a national organization. Well, my why is my two girls, you know, that they are getting to that school age and just hearing what's going on nationwide. It's a, it's a big, huge problem. And we can see how parents being almost targeted by FBI as a domestic terrorist. And hearing all that on the news, I was like, well, let me see how I can contribute to this movement. So I contacted one of our team members in South Florida and I said, what do you need me to do? How can I contribute to help grow the organization? And they said, do you want to start a chapter in Santa Rosa County? Because we don't have one and Good. we need someone to take a leadership position in that place. And I said, of course. So, so we started from there. And since March, we, we have been discovering almost week after week, day after day, we're discovering more and more and more very concerning things with our school district. Is what you're discovering unique to Santa Rosa County, or is it a pattern over the panhandle of Florida, over the states in the southeast, or nationwide? It's a nationwide movement. And it's what is it you're seeing that's sticking out as an overreach, you said? Well, first of all, I would say that it's a nationwide movement targeting, and it's a bad, evil movement, targeting school districts. And in the school districts, as I will give ours as an example, there are a lot of inappropriate indoctrinating materials. I will start with, just to give you an example, school libraries filled with porno pornographic materials. Wow. Promoting Santa Rosa County? Santa Rosa County, yes. And that's, that's what's so ridiculous it's the Bible about. Belt here. I know. And that's what I'm always saying. We're not woke San Francisco. We're here in Santa Rosa County. I'm not giving you examples of woke San Francisco. I'm giving you examples of Santa Rosa County and what's going on here in this Bible Belt. Yeah. And we discovered so many pornographic books. Books promoting transgenderism available in elementary schools as Shemakla Elementary, Rhodes Elementary. That's all little children. My daughter, she's elementary mm. school-aged girl. The children come from parents, some of whom could be teachers in this area. It's the man or woman who's a teacher in the school system in Santa Rosa 
is from the fabric of the community. How is it? Are the teachers responsible for allowing this to get through or has somehow a select few in the school board or a, 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 a senior committee of the teacher group responsible for the dissemination of this inappropriate material? I'll say the responsibility lays in our officials and most of all, even by law, the school board is responsible for instructional materials and what's available in school libraries. Certainly librarians, they make an order of school books that they order with the teachers, but there are a lot of teachers that did not even know. And we have a prime example of a Scambia County teacher, Ms. Vicki Baggett, who brought awareness about this bad pornographic materials available in schools. And because of concerned citizens like her, who's a teacher of 30 something years, that, that was a tremendous difference was made in Scambia County with the public education. As you know, a superintendent was changed, and I believe that there's few school board races that already being proactively involving conservatives. To in Scambia in. County. In Scambia yeah. County. Your point's made. I mean, this is a good example of watching the citizens rise up mm -hmm. and take back their government. You know, we sometimes, in the constitutional republic in, republic in a democracy, a democracy can get kind of messy mm -hmm. because you're out working all day long. And when you come home at supper, you're not thinking of sitting down and making decisions for the mm -hmm. community all that happened all day. Mm -hmm. So you rely on a representative. You elect a representative. You hope he and she is doing the moral, ethical prudent things necessary to make this a better mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Education is just one component. Mm -hmm. and, That's true. And, and you're focusing, it's not just on education, it's for the welfare of the children. So here they are, in, here they are with masks on, which have no scientific proof that it's working. Mm -hmm. And then you, more important than the mask, is the psychological destruction, I heard you say, Right. Of the child's ability during the formidable years mm -hmm. before, what, seven, eight, nine, ten years of age, wearing the damn mask and losing that personal interaction skill right. that's so necessary in their development. Exactly. Are you seeing, are you witnessing children who have been injured psychologically? Well, I can tell even my, my own nephew who goes to, who's a member of Public School Education Center in the county. Yeah. It hurt him tremendously. Like he couldn't breathe. It was always wet because they, you know, they wearing those masks that definitely not even the medical equipment. It's just a piece of fabrics that always gets wet. You cannot breathe. You constantly have, he had dizziness from that. And it, it was absolutely ridiculous. And what is Santa Rosa's position on that now? Well, right now there is a rumor going on that they will try to c continue something like uh, at some sort, but that's, again, that's just a rumor. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But I know Santa Rosa County was one of the last ones who stopped mask mandates, which they should have been the first ones comparing with other counties that more leaning towards those mask mandates, liberal counties. And I'd say you mentioned about Constitutional Republic. That's exactly what we expect our representatives to represent our community. We conservative Christian community here in Santa Rosa County, and we want them to represent us well, to not enforce mask mandates, to remove pornographic materials as soon as they were aware about that. But instead, when we go into our school board members and asking them, like, we showed them book lists with the titles, authors, with brief description, what's in there, which is shocking. Gene, any sane adult will agree it's shocking. Wow. We showed them locations of the school library where it's located. All they needed to do is take it out and protect our children. But instead, they referred us to a bureaucratic process of meeting with librarians or filing a lengthy forms for each book, even though this book's located in multiple libraries. They have multiple copies through, throughout the district. And the law prescribes the school board members to be responsible, not the librarians, but the school board members. If they were aware about those books, they should be the ones who take them out and make that decision instead of referring us to librarians. 
And the school policy is definitely not inconsistent with the law that Governor DeSantis signed. Recently signed, mm-hmm. yeah. In July 1st. You know, there's an old saying, a politician will tell you what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. A leader will tell you what you need to know. Mm-hmm. And these crises that seem to bubble up in every generation. When I was younger, in the late 60s, early 70s, the big hoopla at the time was the Vietnam War during, coming out of the Nixon administration. And then it morphed into something else in the 80s and the 90s. But the point I'm making is the politician will have to show leadership to defend the rights of the people they got that hired them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's your job and mine to make sure that that person who's representing you and me nine to five is a person that's going to protect the moral integrity and the ethics and the and the character and quality of what we entrusted to them. That's right. To raise our children when we're not there. Exactly. And I hope under Moms for Liberty that you have a leverage and a, and a force strong enough to take these people public. If they technically didn't break the law, mm-hmm. they certainly didn't protect the moral fabric of this community by allowing pornographic material to sit on the library shelf. That's right. If they look the other way on it, that's a passive leader that's looking for a paycheck. That's a passive leader and a very proactive politician looking for a paycheck mm-hmm. and not someone that's directly representing you and me. Mm-hmm. I think you agree, you and Jim agree like me, that all we could hope for is to give our children a community, a way of life. Mm-hmm. When we're old and gray, that's better than ours. That's right. We want to hand off to them as something parents, better. That's right. As parents, we always want our children to have better life than us. Tell me about Moms for Liberty in Santa Rosa County. We're going to get one open here in Scambia County, I hope. But tell me about one. So it says Moms for Liberty, but I I guess the guys aren't. I think the guys can be members too. Oh, yes, absolutely. And the grandparents? We we have grandparents. We have Dads for Liberty. We we need our men to step up with us. We are the mothers. We are certainly very passionate, and we do need men to support us as well. Well... Without being sexist or chauvinistic, I mean it that way. <laughs> right. I mean, you, it might be helpful to have a have the husband or the boyfriend or the grandfather yes. step up with a Absolutely. sense of fortitude and kick someone in the butt figuratively to change this policy. Absolutely. I'm more concerned about how the politicians and the elected leaders allowed this to get past them. What did they do to cause this problem? to surface the way it did and you not know. Your your organization is there reacting to a shortcoming of the protection of our children. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't exist. John Adams talked about protecting the freedom of our children through education. Mm-hmm. So how do we, how do we, how can we allow this to get, get to where it is? I think it's a lot of politicians, like you said, that's just being ignorant and the federal government through their funding and grants putting their grip on our local school districts and our local school district representatives instead of being watchdogs for that and what's going on and protecting our children, they just being ignorant and just working for a paycheck instead of working for the people. You know, Maria, on some of my podcasts, I talk about the notion of the political interests diverting, deflecting, or distracting your attention. I call it Gino's three Ds. And what I mean by that is we take your attention off one issue that we really want you not to pay attention to and put your issue attention on something else. Mm-hmm. For example, on the political side, Joe Biden, with more indictment, more evidence in front, right under our noses right. than the Nixon's Watergate affair. Mm-hmm. And in the same sentence, we see them spending the news headlines going after Trump now with a forced, fallacious indictment. That is so ridiculous. But far down behind the scenes, which our leaders should be focusing on, is our children. Mm -hmm. And here, an organization, it's a not-for-profit organization, right? That's right. Comes up out of the ashes and appears from nowhere to now have to do what our very leaders are not even spending time doing. Right. We are grassroots. Grassroots and our organization 
is actually supported by those leaders. And we had our national summit in Philadelphia this past June. We had Donald Trump came to support us. Governor DeSantis came over. And I, I can say that those leaders, they recognize the effectiveness of grassroots organization and how much passion we have. And don't forget, and don't forget Matt Gates, our state representative. Uh, yeah, well, Matt will be probably attending our local event of, made by Santa Rosa County. We're probably going to bring other chapters to join us. Good. But yes, Matt is a strong supporter and definitely he, he is a freedom fighter who mentioned, just like way back to, about completely removing the grips of the Department of Education, the federal one. So, and I think that will be a great step. We need leaders like that. And this is what you meant when you said before about too much government overreach. Mm -hmm. That's true. So it's through those fundings and through those grants, there are certain programs being attached with that that the district should implement. And like, for instance, social emotional learning, that is another word of CRT. And they would say, we do not implement that here. Critical race theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Critical race theory. And if you look in any kind of character development and life skills and emotional development and all that kind of wording, that means it's a part of that same program. But so this is the way you can detect, like for instance, in Santa Rosa County schools, there's different question marks like project wisdom. There is a project wisdom being implemented in, I believe it's East Milton's, but it's also a question mark what exactly it is. It's some affirmations through TV, radio, or some positive thinking, and we just want our education to be about education, to yeah. be traditional education, math, science, reading, writing, and not some question marks like what exactly, why do you teach our children to think? Yeah and what to think and it's kind of going into some psychological aspects that's not supposed to be touched by teachers and educators it's something should be discussed at home with parents and that's what we're talking about parental rights we just to mention one of the mental health professionals was presenting us to us in one of our moms for summits in sarasota and she mentioned if you give me your child for four months then that child will be absolutely, I can make your child thinking absolutely different. That is absolutely wow. possible. This indoctrination is real. And you can see that through those kids that being thriving for transgender surgeries. This George Soros, socialistic Marxism, I know better than you attitude. Mm that is part of a deep state culture that is trying to take over your rights as a parent, never mind the rights of the child, but your rights of a parent. The child is part of a village. It's no longer your mm. child, you know, is to me such, such a falsehood. It is. And the culture behind that. Me now, there was a period of time, and I'll go back to the 80s, when I kind of felt that the parents could be doing more in keeping an eye on their kids in school. It's almost like I'll dump the kid off on the school teacher. There was an era where I thought that was prevalent, mm -hmm. and that was wrong. The parents should be obviously taking responsibility for the children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What Moms for Liberty does is says, hey, we're stepping up to take responsibility for our children. Right. And that's, that's the beauty. It's rem the door is swinging back, and we're beginning to realize that we should be doing more for our children, the rearing of our children, and giving up to our children to teachers or some indoctrination that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be a felony. It should be against the law. It, it's, it should and, be the, a, and there is current laws that are in place in the state of Florida, like pornographic materials law. If anybody would spread pornographic books on the street, Two children, that will be a violation, a third degree felony. Well, thank, thanks to Governor DeSantis accelerating that. Right, exactly. Uh, but where the, the, why they being so complacent, the educators and, I mean, school board members, when we presented that, why they being so complacent is because of the exemption of obscenity laws. So as presenting it as instructional materials for sex education, which is completely it is wrong. It needs to be changed. That legislation needs to be changed in that direction, even further.
furthermore, and thanks to Governor DeSantis for already making a lot of change to happen. That's this good is, to hear. Yes, this is really, really good. And we are very fortunate here because some other chapters throughout the states, they just not being as fortunate as we are having our governor, having our back. Now that's true. But people like you are stepping up to do what's just as important to me at the grassroots level. You're finding other Maria Calkins, <laughs> women and men out there to join the cause. Mm -hmm. Before we go to a break, you want to put a plug in for Moms for Liberty? Like where to find you, where how to reach you and Oh yes, of course. Yes. Well we Moms for Liberty, San Rosa County chapter. We located it off of Avalon Boulevard. We're meeting every last Tuesday of the month at six PM and we hope to see you there. We're talking with Maria Calkins who's the head of Moms for Liberty here in the Escambia, Santa Rosa County area. We do need someone for the Escambia County That's area. True. You know, here in Escambia County, I'm, I'm listening to my buddies who work out with me in the morning. Uh, one of them is, uh, has a wife mm -hmm. who's a teacher in the Escambia County school system. And we find some documents that are coming from some radical left teachers talking about transgenderism questionnaire for the kids, mm -hmm. uh, asking the kids what they think about uh, their interest in changing their sexual identity, their natural sexual birth identity, P posing these esoteric questions on children before eighth grade to me is it's, is it's, criminal. It is criminal, and you're causing the it child is. to think about other things and focus on issues unre unrelated to what you said: reading, writing, arithmetic. Our, exactly. and by the way, American history exactly. and learning the. The culture, which what, which is what made us so great. Speaking of what made us so great, we're in a free world where we get a chance to have conversations like this. We don't have to be worried about Russian dictators blowing airplanes out of the air. That's uh, true. Not yet, anyway. So, so and that isn't a that isn't a that isn't a castigation of your heritage, by the way. <laughs> it's a it's a function of um, of bad leadership, and that's, that's different from the beauty your culture brings. I'm talking to Maria Calkins. She's from Santa Rosa County, Moms for Liberty. We've got another 30 minutes of more to talk about. I'm sure we've got more to cover right after this. Gene Valentino's Grassroots Podcast. He tells the truth. He tries to get information out there to make sure people make good informed decisions. Hi folks, welcome back. You know, if I said to you, I have a program I'd like you to get involved in that's involved in fighting for the survival of America uh, by unifying, educating, and empowering the parents, the grandparents, to defend their parental rights and the children they love so dearly, where would you go? Who would you call? She's sitting next to me. Her name's Marie. Hawkins and Marie, thank you for coming back for the second half of the show. Marie is the area leader of Moms for Liberty. Is that right? That's right. It's a 501c3 not for profit organization. C4. 501c4, excuse me. It's a not for profit entity. And so we talked in, in the first half about the entity. Do you have a website? Yes, it's momsforliberty.org slash Santa Rosa County Floor FL. FL, momsforliberty.org slash Santa Rosa County. Well, the best way to find it, just go to momsforliberty.org and then go to find my chapter and then you will be able to see us on the map, which and, is Santa Rosa County, or and, you can just type in Santa Rosa County. Good. But the real pitch is I want to make sure someone out there donates to the cause. What greater, what, what, it, what greater good could there be than to be helping to support what our government officials are not doing? in protecting our children when they're not with us during the day. And Maria represents a group of men and women who have garnered their resources, gathered together in their meetings to now vet the integrity of what's going on in one case in the school systems. And Maria, what, one of the things you said to me earlier is that without using any names, let's talk about some of the issues you're dealing with right now some of the causes you find yourself in the middle of to have to protect, to fight. 
That's right. And our organization, as you mentioned, is about empowering and educating parents. Mm -hmm. That's why we are going to every school board meeting and presenting the information that we were able to find. And a lot of that information, the school board members, they would, don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And they're not being proactive with removing pornographic materials from our school libraries. So there are a lot of concerned citizens that brought awareness from both counties, from Escambia County as well. And our school board members now, they creating more intimidation tactics, asking private citizens that would like to speak before the board about their residency, if they said it was a county residence, and if they have children in public school. How does this evidence itself? Is it, is it a situation where you're uncovering bad behavior of teachers? bad behavior of administrators, or are they in some sort of combined way just looking the other way as all this pornographic material gets on the shelves to a minor? How is it evidencing itself? Well, I, I think the most, the biggest challenge we face is that our elected officials, the school board members, and the superintendent, they just want to, like you said, look the other way because they do not want to have this image that is damaging their reputation. And what we want to But it them, does. It, it does. Yeah. Yes. And they, for us, it's not about their reputation or about confronting them or being confrontational. It's about children. We want to protect children from, protect their innocence. They have a right to be kids. And we want to, when we started, we, and even now, we still, we're very diplomatic. We're just showing them everything we found. We just want them to take action and be more proactive and passionate as moms for liberty are. And so talk more specifically now about some of the kinds of things you're dealing with daily. Well, daily, I would say we research. We do a lot of research and we do a lot of recording of what we found and, and then spreading awareness. That's what we do on a daily basis. We're growing our organization. We do a lot of marketing. We trying because we're still we're still young and we still need to keep growing keep adding more members that's why i would love to invite everybody over who would like to join the fight for the future of our country for our children and their protection we need more more parents more concerned citizens more those american loving people to join our fight because our country and our children are being under attack by this evil movement of indoctrination. Website and phone number, if, if any? MomsForLiberty.org and Santa Rosa County FL with slash. Okay, got it. Is there a, 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 a public number available? I can just give my number. That well, is on the website. Basically. Well, we'll take it off the website. Just get them to the website, though. Santa Rosa. So that will be MomsForLiberty.org yep. slash Santa Rosa County FL. FL. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So what's your next challenge? What's before you now going forward? Well, going forward, we, we continue growing our organization. And going forward, we'd like to see some good conservative leaders to step in and run for office. For a school board office, we have two seats coming up in 2024. And we have superintendent's race that is coming up. And we'd like to see some change as we try to work with our representatives. We try to remind them about Constitutional Republic and the people they should be representing. But unfortunately, so far, it's been very disappointing to see the ignorance and lack of action. By the parents. By the representatives. By the representatives elected. Elected representatives. That's even more hurtful. That's right. It would seem to me, folks, that if you have any any uh, in this cause, not to mention the future of your own children, you ought to step up and look at this. You know, there's an old saying, failure to defend the rights of other people may someday result in your rights not being defended. So to me, it's so important that every parent, grandparent, mother or father, join momsforliberty.org and, and try to see how you can participate. We need watchmen watch men and watch women looking at the behavior of our elected officials. It not only locally, we certainly need to do it nationwide and it's 
occupied our time on the debates that the president stepped away from this last week here. And we're recording the show in the month of August 2023. And this is right on the heels of President Trump's regrettable indictment, a fourth indictment by a district attorney in Georgia, mind you. And, and on top of that, a lot of, a lot of wrongdoing at the federal level, which takes our attention normally off this grassroots topic, which is so important. Right. And I'm glad you're paying attention to it. My concern is that we provide the necessary resources to Moms for Liberty financially. And if you can't come up with a dollar or two, how about a little bit of time? Uh, join, join her team. Go to the website. If you're not from the Escambia County Panhandle area and you're watching this in Poughkeepsie, New York or Tucson, Arizona right now, get on momsforliberty.org and find a local chapter near your home. Yes. If there is none, I think you can create one. You, right? can, you can start. You can certainly be a founder of a chapter. And that's what I did when I couldn't find a chapter in Santa Rosa County. Really? It was because of your concern of what your children might be indoctrinated with locally. And that's exactly what, Jane, you just mentioned about this big, huge injustice on the federal level. And yeah. a lot of people think, what can I do about it? It's like, I can't do anything about it. Everybody can do something. And that's what I did. I, I, I contribute my time. I started this chapter. Think of what you can do. It could be a small thing, it, but it could matter. And you made your contribution for survival of America. And we need to work together. We need to contribute our time, our resources into this fight because it's, it's much bigger than us. And we need to continue to be strong. And I don't think I need to mention this. It's kind of obvious, but I bet a dollar or two that you're a volunteer and you're not getting paid. <laughs> no, we're not getting paid. Yes, we are volunteering organization, Grassroots. It's Grassroots. Good name for our show, too, Grassroots Truthcast, for just this reason. We're bringing out some of the issues that are at the grassroots level of this nation. Maria Calkins representing Moms for Liberty is just one. Maria, we covered it. I think we covered it. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to conclude on? I just want to end with, yes, we don't get paid, but our investment is long term. We will well see stated. the fruits of this investment in the future of our children, our grandchildren. So please think about that and save the country for our children. Hello, that's so obvious. I mean, isn't everything we're doing for our children, we're trying to leave them a nation, a lifestyle bigger and better than ours. Right. The least we can do is help nurture that. I would hate to think when I'm, my time has come that I left my son, my daughter-in-law, and my grandchildren worse off than me. I would, I get choked up just thinking about that. I feel I failed if I didn't do something to try to make their life better than mine. You have brought that to my attention today, and for that I'm grateful. Maria Calkins, folks from Moms for Liberty, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. This thank is you. another edition of the Grassroots Truthcast. I'm Gene Valentino. Take care of yourself. Thanks for joining us for Gene Valentino's Grassroots Truthcast. Be sure to like and subscribe, and God bless America.